Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we go through factorizing quadratic binomials. Sounds really complicated, doesn't it? But don't worry, I'm here to help you. So let's first understand what factorizing actually is. We can't do it if we don't know what it is. So in the previous video, we had something like x plus 4, x minus 4, and we use the FOIL method to expand it. And the answer you get when you expand it should be x squared minus 16. So that's what we did in a previous video. So this way, where we start with brackets and end up without brackets is called expanding. To go the other way, where we start with an expression that has no brackets, and we end up with brackets, that's called factorizing. So expanding and factorizing undo each other in exactly the same way that multiplication and division do each other. You know, if you take a number, you multiply it by four, then you divide your answer by four, you're back where you started. Because multiplying and dividing undo each other. It's the same with expanding and factorizing. If I start with something, then I expand it, and then I factorize that, I end up where I started. They undo each other. So we're going to look at expressions like this today, and we're going to write it as the product of factors. So this is one factor multiplied by another factor. That is why we call it factorizing. So basically, your answer should have one or two sets of brackets for the questions today. So that's the factorizing. What is a quadratic binomial? So hopefully you know that binomial, we're talking about two terms, like we did binomial expansions where the brackets had two terms in them. So what quadratic means, we're looking at expressions where we have an x squared term, something times x squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at factorizing expressions that have two terms and one of the terms is something times x squared. So I'm going to go through two methods in this video. The first is highest common factor. The second is difference of two squares. I always want you to try highest common factor first. It is important that you note the techniques I'm going through in this video work for quadratic binomials with two terms. In subsequent lesson and video, we're going to go through quadratic trinomials where there are three terms and it turns out that we're going to need to use different methods in that video. So these ones are going to be for when you have two terms and one of them is a something times x squared term. So let's look at an example. So let's start off. I know you've done a bit of factorizing before. Let's start off with something like x squared plus 6x, okay? So I want you to see first if you can use highest common factor. So this is one term. This is another term. Terms are separated by plus and minus signs. So do these two terms have a common factor? Well, they don't have a common number, but there's an x in both terms. So what I do is I put x out the front of the brackets. So what do I times by x to get the first term x squared? And the answer is x. x times x is x squared. What do I times by x to get positive 6x? So the answer is just positive 6. Then I'm done. That's my answer. So if I were to expand this, x times x, x times 6, I would get my original expression. But this is the final answer because it is something times something. Therefore, it is the product of factors and I have factorized it. So what if we had something like x squared minus 9x? Same thing. Both terms have an x. What do you times by x to get x squared is x. What do you times by x to get negative 9x? So what goes in the brackets? It's not positive 9. It's negative 9. And I'm done. What if I had something like 4x squared plus 12x? Well, this time, the common factor is still x, but 4 and 12 have a common factor of 4, so I also need to put that out the front. So what do I times by 4x to get 4x squared? Answer, x. What do I times by 4x to get 12x? So the answer is positive 3. Okay, and I'm done. That is factorized. So I might have something like 4x squared minus 14x. So same idea here. 
what is the highest common factor of 4 and negative 14? So the answer is 2. And x is in both terms, so that's also a common factor. So what do I times by 2x to get 4x squared? I need to times it by 2 to get 4, x to get x squared. What do I times by 2x to get negative 14x? Answer, negative 7. This is done. It's something times something else. So that is the highest common factor method. So let's look at some examples where we might use the difference of two squares. So to show you the difference of two squares, I want to remind you of what we went through in the last video. If I have something like x minus 5 times x plus 5 and I use FOIL, I go firsts, outsides, insides, and then lasts. So remember, we always get, for difference of two squares, the two middle terms cancelling each it other out. So I'm just left with x squared minus 25. Another way I can write that is x squared minus 5 squared. Okay? So if I have start with something that looks like this, a square minus another square, I can factorize it like this. So let's say I have x squared minus 9. So I have a square minus another square. 9 is a perfect square. So this is how I factorize something like this. I can't use the highest common factor. There is none. This time, the second term does not have an x, so I can't take x out the front. It's not a common factor. I'm going to use difference of two squares. So when you have a square minus a square, we're going to have two brackets. Square root the first term, so square root of x squared is just x. Square root the second term. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. We're just undoing, we're just doing the opposite to what was done when we expand difference of two squares using FOIL. Okay, so what about something like x squared minus 16? Okay, so two brackets, square root of x squared, square root of 16 goes in both, one gets a plus, one gets a minus. What if we had something like 4x squared minus 49? Okay, so again, there is no common factor between 4x squared and 49. So, difference of two squares, two brackets. So, square root of the first term, so the square root of 4x squared is 2x. So, 2x goes in both brackets. Square root of 49 is 7. One gets a plus. One gets a minus. So what if I had something like x squared plus 16? Actually, this can't use highest common factor either because there's no common factor between x squared and 16. But it's not the difference of two squares. It's the sum of two squares. This plus makes all the difference. I actually cannot factorize that. x squared plus 16 cannot be factorized. I'm only telling you this because I want you to know that it has to be the difference of two squares. It has to be the minus, one squared minus another one. So sometimes you will have to use both methods. You'll have to use both the highest common factor and difference of two squared method. I said that I always want you to try highest common factor first. Please do that. So let's say we have something like 2x squared minus 98, right? Well, that's not really the difference of two squares. Even though there's a minus, two is not a perfect square and 98 is not a perfect square. But they both have a common factor of two. So what I can do is take two out the front. What do I times by two to get two x squared? So this is x squared. What do I times by two to get negative 98? Answer is negative 49. Now, what is in the brackets is the difference of two squares. So, I still have my 2. Remember, this is how I do difference of 2 squares. 2 brackets. Square root of x squared. Square root of 49. 1 gets a plus. 1 gets a minus. This is now fully factorized. It's now written as the product of two factors. So, this is still a quadratic binomial because it only has one, two terms. And one of the terms is an x squared term. Let's just do one more example like that. So, let's say I have 3x squared minus 108. So, 
can't use highest, uh, sorry, I can't use the difference of two squares straight up because three is not a perfect square and neither is 108. However, this term and this term have a highest common factor of three. Three goes into three, it also goes into 108. So I take highest common factor out the front. What do I times by three to get three x squared? Answer x squared. What do I times by three to get negative 108? You can just put negative 108, divide three on your calculator if you want, and I get 36. This is now the difference of two squares. So remember, difference of two squares gets two brackets. It's the difference of two squares because I have one square minus another square. So square root of x squared, square root of 36, one gets a plus, one gets a minus. So these are the techniques you need to know for quadratic binomials, and I look forward to going through quadratic trinomials in the next video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a wonderful day.